when that agent that you hire goes back to work after that signed agreement to start marketing your home, they need to be communicating with you about what they're doing and about how that market is responding to their marketing efforts. And they need to be doing that often. Even if they don't have anything to report, they should still be checking in with you once per week saying, hey, not much happened this week, but here's just so you know, this is what we're doing this week. Um, and of course, if we get any showings and, and feedback, then I'll let you know as soon as possible. Um, but they're at least communicating with you so that you understand that, hey, I am working behind the scenes to help you sell your house. I'm not just sitting at my desk with my feet kicked up and relying on the fact that the home is on the MLS. And hey, if an agent has a buyer, then they'll go on the MLS and they'll search around and they'll inevitably find your house. And I'm sure they'll show it to their buyers or their buyers will find it online and tell their agent about it. And if anybody out there is interested, they're going to find it. They're going to see it. They're going to make an offer. And that's not always the case. So much of what we do from a marketing standpoint, frankly, is force feeding our listings to agents and buyers. And we have very specific ways of doing that. But communication is such an important part of our industry. And frankly, our industry sucks at it. That's the number one complaint that I get out of sellers that had their home on the markets previously that did not sell with their first or second or third or 10th agent. I talked with a seller last week that had fired nine agents. And it wasn't like it was erratic behavior. Each agent had six months to sell the house and nobody did. And I'm looking at the house and the pictures and the condition and the price. And yeah, there's some things that the sellers need to change, but it's nothing drastic. But the seller said, I've never experienced anything like this in my entire life. I cannot for the life of me find an agent that will do what they say they're going to do. It seems like every time I list my home with somebody, they give me this great pitch and then I don't hear from them for a month or two at a time. And they're just not, I feel like they're not working. They're just sitting back and waiting for other agents to do the work for them. And so that's why I created this communication guarantee. I also have an easy exit guarantee or a one-day listing agreement, however you want to coin the phrase. But if at any point in time you feel like I'm not doing my job or you've made a bad hire and you think I'm the worst agent on planet Earth, or you decide to stay in your home and not sell it or rent it out, whatever the case might be, I don't force people to remain in their contract if they don't want to be in their contract. And every once in a while, because, you know, when you're dealing with hundreds of people a year, you're inevitably going to find a few people that you just don't work well with. It's just, you know, the law of averages, I suppose, or whatever Murphy's law or whatever law is out there that I'm, I'm not thinking of, but you're inevitably going to have one or two or three people a year that you just don't work well with. Maybe they don't like my style. Maybe I don't like their style. <laughs> it's just, you have to have open-ended conversation to be able to voice your opinion and your concerns and your frustration. Um, and have those conversations and then move on from it. But you need to at least have an environment where you and the agent can speak freely. You know, I'd never want to be in a position where I feel like I have to walk on eggshells with my client and not say something that they should know that might impact the process for them or their ability to sell their home for the most money possible. When you have a relationship with your agent where they're not telling you what they want to tell you for fear of how you're going to react then it's frankly a toxic relationship and not a business relationship. So communication is so important when you're working with a real estate agent, whether you're buying or selling. 